I'm grateful and I'm blessed to have you, you know. Um, the lyrics speak for itself. So it's just we're at a time, you know, in life where we just want to let people know that it's okay to be in love and fall in love and, you know, give you all to someone that you care about. So. Mm. That is something too, and and I'm really looking forward to the single as well too. And um, where can people uh, find the song as well? Yeah, well, all digital distribution outlets. So you got your 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 Apple Music, Amazon Music, et cetera, et cetera, Deezer, Spotify. Um, yep, Spotify, uh, Title. You know, as far as your streaming outlets go. So anywhere, you know, it's it, it you know, it's, times are changing. You know, so there won't be a cassette. <laughs> <You know. laughs> I remember a cassette. Oh, my goodness. Or yeah, it's man. like the single CD. It's like my sister gave that to me, and I remember the uh, single cassettes back in the day, and I have to say this. I was a mobile DJ at one point as well, too, and and I did play your music and also played um, MC Hammer and everything else, you know, especially at the, um, the hip-hop gang. It's like you played everything, but where I live, it's like you had a good portion of it. It's like I remember the single cassettes. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> A couple of months ago, somebody came up to me and demanded that I autograph a Bliss album cassette, and his name was Richard. So you know what I said. I wrote, I don't want to be like you. And on the other side, I wrote Filthy Rich, and he died laughing. Like, that is awesome, you know, because that was a song on the album. But, he, uh, but yeah, those, those cassettes were pretty cool. I saw a couple of years ago when George Lopez had a late show, he made a eight track out of 50 Cent's uh, album. And I thought it was pretty cool that before I self-destruct the album. And he gave the eight track to Mark Harmon because Mark Harmon still listens to an eight track in a classic car that he owns. Eight and tracks? Like, oh my cool. gosh! <laughs> yeah, yeah, I swear to you, that was that was the coolest thing. And Mark Harmon was like, "I like Fifty Cent. I'm gonna listen to this." <laughs> <laughs> and then he threw Fifty Cent a football pass, man. But I, I, let me tell you something. I love Fifty Cent, man. I, I love everything about it, man. Another Q Burrow MC. That's all I can say. I, I, I love that dude. Oh, my goodness. It's like when you guys mentioned about Mark Harmon and the uh, eight tracks in a classic car, and I thought to myself, do you think the eight track will make a comeback? Now that you guys mentioned it, I think I'm going to pull mine out. I'm kidding, folks. I'm kidding. <laughs> and, and unless they do some type of weird Bluetooth thing with it, I don't know. Uh-huh. Yeah, I, I think I think that's um, – you know, you know, something as well, too. It's, um, you know, never to come out. Uh, cassettes, of course, you got vinyl making a comeback and everything like that. There'll be another time as well, too. And um, what are some of your other singles that you have out besides the two we talked about? Oh, well, let's see. Um, well, we got we got you. Uh, How Can I Not Feel Love is out. And um, that, that's a pretty fun one. And there's an interesting story behind that because it took two years to clear that sample. I'm telling you, it literally took two years to play that sample, mm -hmm. all right? I was on the phone. Let me tell you, uh, Jocko Pistorius, all right? Sweet, sweet guy. Um, passed away early. If you go by the Wikipedia, he was manslaughtered by a, 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 a bouncer who had too much of an anger problem. Ooh. And, uh, beat the crap out of him in Florida, and he died from his injuries about maybe like a week or so later. And um, he made one of the coolest uh, songs, a song called Portraits of Tracy. Mm -hmm. And it's that zin, 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 You remember it? Because, you know, SWV used it with Rain. Childish Gambino used it with his song. Um, what is that song? Um, hey, stay Woke. What is it called? What is it called? You know, the, I stay Woke. Dun, 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 dun. He yeah, did it. it. Yeah. And um, it's called something else, but it's like, but either way, um, that's you know, so, that's yeah, Red Bone. There you go, Red Bone. And um, I listen to it all the time because one of my my best friend Brandon loved that song. So when he when he calls me on the phone, I made the ringtone. Whenever he calls, he goes, "My peanut butter chocolate cake with Kool Aid." That's his favorite line. You know? Nobody knows what Childish Gambino talk about when he says that, but it's a dope line. Shout so, out to Childish Gabino for doing the cover of um, our our song "I Die Without You" a couple of years ago. I think it was on the BBC Extra One um, at one point. So shout out to him for sure. Yeah, he's an awesome dude. You know, shout out to Lando Calrissian. But um, but yeah. So anyway, um, so finally after they're going back and forth with the lawyer, like, look, guys, you got to clear the thing, you know. So his daughter Mary Pastorius sends me an email and says, 
you have the blessing. And <laughs> so finally we could release it and it was fun. Nice. And um, it, it's another one of those joints where it's, everything is about love, man. Everything is about trying to get back. It's like, you know, everybody else has every angle covered. You know, the booty songs are covered and, you know, the trap songs are all covered. Somebody has to cover love. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Nobody wants to stand up for love anymore. It's, it's, it's such a, uh, a, a risque thing. It's like you're weak. You're not a real dude if you don't talk about it. But, you know, we got to talk about it because it's real and it's what women really want and it's what men really want and aren't always bold enough to admit. You know, we we got to have love in our life and we got to move knowing that we have love in our life but we're not going to be productive husbands and fathers and sons, period, and brothers for that matter. So that's, you know, so that's what it's about. And I hope, I hope people go and get it, you know. Yeah, we're looking forward to it as well, too. Well, uh, you know, you guys can tell about once again um, where you can get and everything else. And, of course, um, you know, the original PM Dawn did set drift on, um, you know, Memory Bliss. And just a question as well, too. Um, would you have any interest in uh, redoing that song or just leave it the way it is? You know something? Uh, we did it once. Did not like the remake. I'm not a fan of the remake. Um, however, I will say this. There are plans for a remake or a reimagining in the works, and it will be done this time more carefully, and we will make better decisions with respect to the classic Utopia Knights, you know, as I call them, the classic TM Dawn fans. Mm-hmm. Um, to the classic fans who are listening, we, we apologize. We are not ignoring you. We hear you. Um, but, you know, I'm, I'm learning to develop a tougher skin with stuff that people say on Twitter. <laughs> and um, I'm trying. Thank, and I'm going to get shout shout to Larry Zerner. <laughs> I'm going to shout him out again in another interview. Larry Zerner, you know him. He was Shelly in Friday 13 Part 3. And now he's a very amazing and brilliant-minded entertainment lawyer. And um, he gave me some really good advice. <laughs> he told me to, uh, he said, look, when you picked up that microphone, you accepted the responsibility that you would have haters. So, you know, he said, stop being a punk and, you know, just live with the haters. And so that's what I've learned to do. I just, so whatever you say, it's nice. I love you. And if you hate me, fine, I'll just be a heel. You know, I'll be the Randy Orton of hip hop, you know, mm-hmm. and when I see you at the show and say it, I'm going to RKO you. Because, <laughs> you know, just to your shock, I'm six foot two and near 300 pounds. So I can give you an RKO that I'm hurt. So, <laughs> <laughs> Am I right, Rock? We gotta get him. <laughs> yes, yes, we are. Yes, and, 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 and Rock is like a Golden Glove boxer. I mean, we're not losing any fights up front. I'm just we're not. You know, we're not making it about that. We're saying we're not. Nobody's taking the L in the group anymore. <laughs> we just want to put that out there. Just use caution when approaching. <laughs> <laughs> listen, 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 shout out, shout out to my second, my second pop sweetie Whitaker is our call. Yeah, man. The, the best defensive boxer of all time. Let's not forget that. So if you know a lot for him, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> Yo, the dude was literally chained by Pernell Whitaker's dad, man. I'm like, y'all better have an entourage. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> 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 oh my goodness! <laughs> hey, I'm just saying, man. Look, new day, new dawn, man. We, we like you're trying to do what? Look here, little man. You know, you know, you know. Sometimes I rock people over my shoulders in the club, so we put it on Facebook Live. Like, hey, look here, man. Anybody can rock jewelry, but can you rock a brother? You know what I mean? Like, but just put them on your shoulders. You know, just let them know. Let us walk around with him and everything, and then let him go. Be like, there you go. Now run along, man. Go on back to your family. You know, one of those things. But uh, like I said, we like we like to have fun. We don't want to hurt people. We just want to have fun. So you know, it, it sounds like you guys are having fun too. And of course, uh, I was going to ask what your favorite project is, but it sounds like um, you're enjoying what you're doing. And what do you consider the most challenging when it comes to what you're doing? The distance. Am I right, Rock? The distance is most challenging. Yeah. Right now, I'm mulling over if he should come closer to me or I should come closer to him, you know. And it's just a matter of seeing what's best for our families and stuff like that. But um, we just got to work on the distance because it's always like 
I, I get on I a plane, think, he gets on a plane sort of thing. Yeah, I, I mean, distance, yeah, but to me, it's more of just um, we're such innovators and creators that we'll make a lot of music and we'll say, okay, this is it. And then, like, what, maybe a couple of days later, you're like, eh, I don't know. You know, <laughs> and you create something else. <laughs> Wait. Wait, did you yeah, just impersonate me on the air? Did you just impersonate me on the air? No, he, he, he impersonate. Cause I said, I'll impersonate you. You want me to do my rock and roll? I'll do it. <laughs> I gotta get you on video next time. I gotta get you on video interview next time. <laughs> I mean, that's what I'm talking about. All right, I'm gonna let you shine. I'm not gonna perfect cover ball. No, but but you know, we we love what we do. It's we we just want to make sure that any music that we put out from from our catalog that you know it touches the people around the world. You know, we 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 love what we do. So yeah. Just distance and just making sure the creativity is on point for people to 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 understand and take in, you know, mm-hmm. and embrace. It, it sounds like it too. You guys are doing a great job, and uh, got a few minutes here left with um, Doc G and K Rock of PM Doyne. And uh, who do you consider your biggest influences in your career? So um, one can start, the other can jump in. You guys have been doing a great job of it. All right, Rock, you go first this time, man. Come on. Um, I would have to say NERD. Um. You can't be me. I'm a rock star. So yeah, NERD. Um, I would have to say Run DMC for sure. Um, and I can throw one more group. Uh, person, excuse me, personal group in there. I would say Big L. I love Big L, man. He doesn't get the credit that he that you know he deserves. So. And then go so ahead, I'm Doc. It's your turn now. So go ahead. <laughs> All right. Um, well, I'm going to go the more personal route this time. Um, I want to shout out my my uh, my very dear sweet uncle James Sylvester Carr, who is now in heaven and lost him back in '88. Um, he he put the battery in my back with with, with rhyming and everything. Uh, my uncle Ellery as well. Um, he he put a battery in my back too, and um, shout to my aunt Cheryl because she 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 was a very uh, thorough person in the in in the hip hop world locally in Queens back in the late seventies and everything. And she put my uncles on, which and then they carried me into it, you know. And that's when I got into it with you know the the Sugar Hill Gang and the Run DMCs, you know. And I want to say shout out to Wonder Mike of the Sugar Hill Gang. I love him very dearly, a uh, good dude. And, um, you know, he he lives with uh, diabetes just like uh, Prince B did, and he's fighting it, and he's fighting a good fight from what I understand. So, Wonder Mike, keep shining, doing your thing. You're still a hero of mine, too. That goes since I was five years old. I was spitting that man's raps. So, you know. That is amazing as well, too. Just a lot of love all around the board. And uh, what, yeah. what's the best advice you can give to uh, to anybody right now? Always treat people like gold because you never know when you're going to be on the lower end of it and you're going to need the people, how you treated people that are interns and things like that. They, they, they grow up, they rise up, they develop, and you'll need them. And, they, and, and how they interact with you when you're older is going to be how you treated them when you was on the top of the mountain. And I treat everybody like gold. I treat everybody with respect. Um, after the show, it's like, hey, Doc, can you come to our house? My mother makes a great a chicken dinner and everything. Yeah, I'll come to your house. And, you know, or, hey, Doc, my, 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 my cousin is sick in the hospital. Can you come over there and meet him and pray with him? Absolutely. Let's go. You know, these are the, these are the things that really matter. These are the things that are really important. You know, I always speak about the aging rock star mentality. Never run from fans who aren't chasing you anymore. That's going to make you a zero loser. Mm-hmm. And I pride myself on not being that guy. I pride myself on being the opposite of that guy. So if you come up to me when I'm in Red Lobster and you want an autograph, Guess what? I'm going to pull that asshole speech out of my mouth 
wipe my hands off with a napkin, I'm going to take that Sharpie and give you the autograph. Because, you know, 